Welcome to the Folktale Project. This is Dan Scholes. Today we have our final Chinese fairy tale of the week, coming from the Chinese fairy book. And this is a story that the first time I went through it, it reminded me a lot of Hans Christian Andersen. I'll let you listen and see if you can find out why. This is The Little Hunting Dog. Once upon a time, in the city of Shansi, there lived a scholar who found the company of others too noisy for him. So he made his home in a Buddhist temple. Yet he suffered because there were always so many gnats and fleas in his room that he could not sleep at night. Once, he was resting on his bed after dinner when suddenly, two little knights with plumes in their helmets rode into his room. They might have been about two inches high, and rode horses about the size of grasshoppers. On their gauntleted hands, they held hunting falcons as large as flies. They rode about the room with great rapidity. The scholar had no more than set eyes on them when a third entered, clad like the others but carrying a bow and arrows and leading a little hunting dog the size of an ant with him. After him, came a great throng of footmen and horsemen, several hundred in all, and they had hunting falcons and hunting dogs by the hundred too. Then the fleas and gnats began to rise in the air, but all were slain by the falcons, and the hunting dogs climbed on the bed and sniffed along the walls, trailing the fleas, and ate them up. They followed the trace of whatever hid in the cracks and nosed it out, so that in a short space of time, They had killed nearly all the vermin. The scholar pretended to be asleep and watched them, and the falcons settled down on him and the dogs crawled along his body. Shortly after came a man clad in yellow wearing a king's crown who climbed on an empty couch and seated himself there. And at once all the horsemen rode up, descended from their horses, and brought him all the birds and game. They then gathered beside him in a great throng and conversed with him in a strange tongue. Not long after the king got into a small chariot and his bodyguards saddled their horses with the greatest rapidity. Then they galloped out with great cries of homage, till it looked as though someone was scattering beans and a heavy cloud of dust rose behind them. They had nearly all of them disappeared, while the scholar's eyes were still fixed on them, full of terror and astonishment, and he could not imagine whence they had come. He slipped on his shoes and looked, but they had vanished without a trace. Then he returned and looked all about his room, but there was nothing to be seen. Only, on a brick against the wall, they had forgotten a little hunting dog. The scholar quickly caught it and found it quite tame. He put it in his paint box and examined it closely. It had a very smooth, fine coat and wore a little collar around its neck. He tried to feed it a few breadcrumbs, but the little dog only sniffed at them and let them lie. Then it leaped into the bed and hunted up some nits and gnats in the folds of the linen, which it devoured. Then it returned and lay down. When the night had passed, the scholar feared it might have run away, but there it lay curled up as before. When the scholar went to bed, the dog climbed into it and bit to death any vermin it could find. Not a fly or gnat dared alight while it was around. The scholar loved it like a jewel of price. But once he took a nap in the daytime and the little dog crawled into bed beside him. The scholar woke and turned around, supporting himself on his side. As he did so, he felt something and feared it might be his little dog. He quickly rose and looked, but it was already dead, pressed flat, as though cut out of paper. But, at any rate, none of the vermin had survived it. And that is the Chinese tale of The Little Hunting Dog from the Chinese Fairy Book. It reminds me so much 
of Hans Christian Andersen with his little people and their kings and dogs and falcons, and not to mention the scholar is usually a dead giveaway for Hans Christian Andersen. This is Dan Schultz for the Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, anywhere you like to get your podcasts. You can follow us on Twitter at Folktale Project. You can find us on Auto Radio, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Spotify, anywhere you like to listen. And you can always head over to folktaleproject.com, where you'll find a new story waiting for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And please don't forget to head over to iTunes or well, anywhere that you like to listen to the podcast, and leave a review, give a rating. I love to read them. Next week, we're heading off to Italy for three new stories. As always, thank you so much for listening. <laughs>